15 years ago, using low settings in PC gaming was considered graphical suicide. <laughs> <laughs> that's quite a statement the last uh, resort option that destroyed the artistic vision of games for minor performance gains with the rise of the Steam Deck however and the really? Steam hardware survey showing people holding onto their GPUs for longer these days I feel that more and more gamers are considering low settings as a meaningful option to increase performance with carefully curated cutbacks to the visuals do you have any insight into how developers craft these low presets to keep games scaling downwards why are these settings so much better today compared to a decade ago i've also noticed that modern ports can have low presets that feel very carefully considered but may still opt to turn off zero cost effects such as bloom lens flares basic depth of field and an isotropic filtering filtering why is this uh, alex this is a quite an interesting topic isn't it because the mm -hmm. the stigma of low settings is very much re reduced these days. And a lot of games actually, you know, Control is a great example. Alan Wake is too, both on mm -hmm. uh, Northlight. They look absolutely fine at low settings. And right. they are, in fact, similar to the console versions, which very. might be indicative <laughs> to, for yeah. one plausible explanation. Yeah, so consoles driving the low-end spec of what is driving development of many games would be a really good reason why that's the way they more elegantly scale that way because the initial base thing that it is running on and the artistic vision is designed around is something that is maybe low settings already almost for some for a lot of settings i think that's a great one another thing is more than a decade ago especially um the base cost of doing things that we now take for granted in rendering ssao uh, cascaded shadow yeah. maps it was either on or off and the reason why it was is because you really couldn't get much more out of them by turning certain levers down. And so you had this somewhat awkward scenario where the, the game's low settings would turn off basic things because there was yes. really no way to scale them lower. Uh, Crisis is a som somewhat okay example of that. Um, the low I, think, I think it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or the low settings. And I think even, no, it's just the low settings uh, for most things turn off like shadow maps and things like that that are very. It looks horrendous. It does look settings. bad. It does. And also, you know, there's a lot of <laughs> other things like that. And also, you know, that that's an example, like pioneering effects that they didn't know how to scale. And then around the time uh, GPUs got a lot better uh, and just more base powerful, what the thing they would start doing to scale effects is by changing internal sample accounts and uh, resolutions of effects. And for a lot of effects, uh, I'll say like SSAO, volumetric lighting, screen space reflections, even depth of field to a certain degree, when you start turning down the resolution, they just get less precise and don't always alias a lot more. So a lot of people don't notice the differences for those kind of things. And I think that's why in a modern port, uh, if you turn down like an Alan Wake two or even in control without h without ray tracing like if you just go between the the various volumetric lighting settings you're like they all look pretty good you know they're just like less accurate uh and and you know, i think i think that's a big part of it is this like the bar has been raised through technological innovation and progress over the last 10 to 12 years so that scaling is now better uh and I, yep. yeah, I mean, I really wish there wasn't a stigma though, still about low settings. <laughs> there are some occasional oddballs where I think the low settings are bad. And that's why I point them out. I pointed them out in Forspoken. I pointed them out in The Last of Us Part One. Basically, the texture settings were just quick two level textures for no good reason. <laughs> I, I, okay. I always say that because it's the first game that I always think, when I ever think about like, poorly filtered textures and like really big textures i always think of for some reason quake 2 which okay. is a bit mean uh because it's a cool game um but yeah uh i think that's the one like the the one of the rare things where games really mess miss out on stuff but nowadays unlike in the like from like 2010 to 2017 the ultra settings in games now i'd say are getting better because of ray tracing used they used to be like your your shadows are now really high res and really sharp and it's like okay but all shadows in real life aren't really sharp so the setting is just about aliasing reduction and it's not very cool and now it's like oh now your shadows are physically plausible or oh here's an entirely new gi system or ho reflections are now off screen 
thanks to ray tracing. And I think that's a, a bigger leap for the good use of ultra settings than they were for the last decade. And I think that's all I have to say about that. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts on low settings, John? Uh, just Alex, you're spot on. Thing, it's just things scale better these days. And it used to mean that low settings often look just bad right? <laughs> potato mode. And that's no longer the case like the steam deck really made that clear to me when i'm tweaking games for that thing when i saw when, when you see something like tekken 8 running it with hdr on this thing even though the settings are pretty basement it's like dang this actually still feels convincingly like proper tekken 8 mm -hmm. it looks darn good uh, but in the past, that was not the case. And Crisis, of course, is one of those great examples. But there's plenty of others where just doing a, like Shadow Maps, for instance, just using that technique came with such a cost that enabling it full stop was a gigantic performance hog. So if you went shadows low, be like, well, we'll just turn that off. <laughs> and then you have no shadows. Or, you know, and so like you would just turn off all these major uh things that build the overall visual design of the game and you just end up with something that looks incorrect and like kind of broken i would say one that i remember loving uh was halo combat evolved because oh, God. on xbox it relied heavily on pixel shaders right uh not everybody with a pc at that point obviously had a card capable of that especially thanks to nvidia <laughs> x line of cards yeah i was about to oh say boy. Like, i wonder why that was geforce 4 mx's that came out yeah yeah so they had to create a fixed function pipeline for halo combat evolved which took away all the fancy shaders and boy did it look bad it was it's so weird looking uh i guess if you wanted to see what halo might look like on a ps2 it's like a good preview of that. Yeah, or like a Although, like, like a Dreamcast the, the problem, Halo. The yeah. problem there though is that if they had officially done other console ports without shaders, they probably would have come up with other solutions to simulate the effects. Whereas on the PC, it was just like, well, uh, we'll just turn them off. Yeah. So you just end up with something that looks incorrectly arted up. And okay. that's what low settings used to mean. And it just doesn't anymore. So the final part of his question, Nolan's question here, which is about the concept of turning off zero cost effects like bloom, lens flares, basic sure. depth of field and an isotropic filtering. A lot of this stuff, well, I can't say the same about AF, but a lot of this stuff is just like people don't like this stuff and want right. the ability to turn it off. <laughs> yeah, yes. seems fair enough, right? That's that's good stuff. But it is a little, I mean, you really, most of those, especially things like bloom, I can't, Remember the last time Bloom was really expensive in anything, almost. Yeah. Uh, but it used yeah. to be really expensive. Can you imagine used that? To used to be really expensive. It was like a whole part of like Source. They're like, we now support Bloom. And your X800 XT is going to explode when you turn it on. You know? <laughs> so, dynamic if, range pipeline. Like yeah. in Far Cry 1.3. Yeah. And it halves the frame rate it when you turn it on. Frame rate. And it's all, all it's really doing is making the colors better. It's incredible how things advance. Uh, mm. but I'm, I'm happy with the, the situation we are currently in now for most games. Some games do it way better than others still, but it's, it's better than having to turn off whole things wholesale. Mm. And medium is actually turning out to be not oh, it's bad, a winner. Actually. It's a winner. Yeah. yeah.